What's up, my name is Technobo here for Troubleshoot and welcome back to another video. In this video, we'll be running through setting up your own Among Us server. No, this isn't a crewlink server and yes, it is compatible with most mods. Why exactly would you want this? Well, if you're afraid of the game's possible anti-sheet or anything like that, or you'd just like to host your own private server for whatever reason, this is the guide that'll show you how to set up and use Imposter, which is the current go-to for custom servers. As you can see, the GitHub page over here, which will be linked down in the description below, is where you get it from. And if I look at something like the Among Us Sheriff mod over here, you can see that they say that you're able to join your own custom server just to be safe using Imposter. So of course, if you've ever been curious of how and if you can do this, this is the video that shows you that. Of course, if you'd like to know how to set up numerous Among Us mods, make sure to check the description down below for links to those videos. And of course, if you'd like to get Crewlink and a possible private server of your own setup for that, check the description as well. But regardless, let's go ahead and begin. How exactly do we get to downloading this mod? Well, scrolling down, you'll see this imposter version, followed by two download links over here. If you click one of these, the second one for the experimental version will take you across to AppVeyor instead of the releases tab on GitHub. Of course, while the experimental version will probably have new and better features, the one that isn't experimental and is available on GitHub is usually more stable. If you'd like to download the experimental version, click it download next to it over here, which will take you across to AppVeyor. You'll need to download not only the matching imposter patcher, which is the client for your PC, which over here would be Win64, but also the imposter server, Win64, if that's what you're running. Of course, you'll have to give imposter patcher to your friends as well, as this is the client version. Even though the non-experimental branch currently isn't compatible with the game at the time of recording, I'll show you how to do that first. But if you'd like to get immediately up and going, skip to the time on screen now, as this version currently doesn't work, but I'm including it here because in the future, the non-experimental versions that you download from GitHub are usually the ones that you want to download and install. It's basically the same process for both of them. Simply click download over here to be taken across to the latest release on the releases section. Simply click imposter client win x64 and down here imposter server win x64. All players that are going to be playing your game will need the imposter client.zip and only you hosting the server will need imposter server. First of all, I'll open up imposter server.zip and extract the contents to a folder, say on my desktop. It can be wherever, but I'm just putting it here. I'll call it imposter, drag everything out into the folder and then open it up. There we go. For your friends on Windows to connect to the server, they'll need to download and open up the client zip and then extract everything in here into another folder. I'll call it say imposter client. They'll drag everything out into the folder, close the zip, open the folder and then simply run imposter.exe. They'll be asked for an IP address. All I have to do is click save and it just works as expected. Super simple. But for the server over here, we'll have a config file that we have a whole bunch of settings that we can change here. Everything inside of here should remain as is unless you know what you're doing. Simply just run imposter server.exe and a new black window will open up. Matchmaker listening on is 0000 22023 and the public server IP is 127.001.22023. Of course, this is all local and we'll only be able to join our own server on our own computer until we A, allow the program through our Windows firewall and B, allow it through our router using a method called port forwarding. But we'll get there in just a moment. To join the server on your own PC, simply open up the imposter client we downloaded earlier, open up imposter.exe. Inside of the IP address over here, simply enter whatever is shown here. So in my case, 127001, then click save. After doing this, all you have to do is start up Among Us. Simply click online, create game, confirm. And if you see an error like this, don't worry. All that we have to do to fix this is download the newer experimental version, which is updated more often. Of course, I showed you this method as more than often enough, it'll be good to get it working. So let's go ahead and install the test version. I'll put these folders to the side and right next to them, I'll make matching folders, imposter, beta, and imposter, client, beta. I'll reopen the GitHub page. And instead of clicking 1.1.0 up here, I'll click the download button next to 1.2.2. Then on this page, I'll simply locate the correct version of imposter patcher, open it in a new tab, and imposter server, open it in a new tab as well. After that's done, let's open up both of these and extract both of them to the correct places. So the imposter server zip gets extracted into my imposter beta folder over here. Of course, it doesn't matter what you call it. Then the imposter patcher over here is extracted into our 
client folder here. These are the files that you'll be giving to your friends that you'd like to join the server. First of all, let's boot up the server from our imposter beta folder. All you have to do, once again, is check the config over here if you'd like to change anything. But for me, I'll be leaving it as is and simply opening up imposterserver.exe. After doing this, you should see some more information here, as well as the way to shut it down. Content root path, C uses techno desktop imposter beta, which is this folder over here. Of course, we have a plugins and a libraries folder over here. Let's minimize out of the server folder and open up the client folder. In order for players to join our server, all they have to do is download this file from the AppVeyor website or simply download it from a zip that you send them, then open up imposter.exe. Once again, enter an IP address over here that matches this one over here. This is of course to join our own server on our own computer. For your friends to join you from outside of your local network, they'll need to enter your external IP address here. So save and it asks us to restart among us. Let's go ahead and fire it up. I'll click on online, then create game under host. After doing that, you can see that we're in our own server and I have 50 odd milliseconds ping. Of course, I'm connected to my own computer, so that's probably more than a bit off. However, if we minimize out of the game and have a look at our server over here, you can see the map was created, IKP JPT, which matches the code down here, and player Technova is joining. Awesome, our private server is now running as we'd hope. So what exactly do we need to do from here to get people outside our local network to join and play with us? Well, this is where things get a little bit exciting. If you've ever hosted a Minecraft server before, or anything like that, you probably know where we're going with this. Number one, we'll allow this program through our Windows firewall, and then we'll go ahead and allow this through our router using port forwarding. So to begin, your Windows firewall. Press start, type in firewall, and then open up the Windows Defender firewall over here. If you have an antivirus or third-party firewall application installed, you'll see this prompt. You'll need to go ahead and allow it through the firewall in that program, depending on whatever it is. Because they're all so different, I can't show you how to do that. You'll have to go ahead and Google it. If you don't see that error and you're just using the default Windows firewall, click Advanced Settings anyway. Then a new window will open up. Inside of here, head across to the Inbound Rules section in the top left. Then in the top right, click New Rule. And inside of here, we'll choose Port, Next. And I'll make sure to port forward the ports that are listed inside of the imposter server's config file over here. So for me, just 22023. Pretty simple. So let's go ahead and punch in specific port 22023 TCP. Next, allow, next, next, and we'll give it a name. I'll call it Among Us Servo. Then I'll hit finish. Once again, new rule, port, next, this time a UDP, paste in the port, next, allow, next, next, among us server. Then click outbound rules in the top left, then new rule once again. Port, next, TCP, paste in the port, next, allow, next, next, among us server. Once again, new rule, port, next, UDP, paste in the port, next, allow, next, next, among us server. After doing this, we've now successfully allowed it through our Windows firewall, and the only step left is to go ahead and port forward. Let's go ahead and do that. First of all, we'll need the IP address of our computer on our local network. Basically, what's going to happen is if you have one router, people from the outside will talk to your router instead of your PC. Port forwarding simply allows them to talk through your router to your PC. If you have multiple routers in a chain, you'll need to port forward one to the next one down in the chain towards your computer or server, so that people from the outside can talk through one router through another straight to your computer. That's what port forwarding is. For this, I'll show you just how to do it using a one router setup, which is most common for most people. You connect to one router and then you go immediately to the internet instead of through another one. If you have a multi-router setup at home, make sure to check the description down below to learn how to port forward through multiple routers. To begin, hold start and then press R. Type in CMD and we'll open up another black window. Type in ipconfig and hit enter. After doing this, look for the way that you're connected to the internet. For me, it's Ethernet Adapter Ethernet. Then look for IPv4 address 192.168, whatever it is over here. This is our internal IP address and is the IP of our computer inside of our local network. We'll be port forwarding from our router to this, which is my computer. So in order to port forward from your router to your PC, you'll need to head across to your router's login page. Usually you can see it as the default gateway down here. 
simply navigate across to this in a browser of your choice. But of course, because every router is so different, it's impossible for me to show you how to do it on your specific one. So I've created this website over here. This website does absolutely nothing, but it lets me demonstrate what you need to do on your home router. Don't bother going to this website as it won't do anything for you. Just use this purely for what it is, an example. You'll need to go ahead and look up a guide on how to port forward your specific router. Eventually, you'll get across to a page that looks something similar to this, asking for an external port, internal port, protocol, IP, and whether it's enabled or not. All that we have to do is once again, look at the port that needs to be forwarded, which is 22023. I'll type in 22023, 22023 on both the internal and external sides, set the protocol to both TCP and UDP, and then under local IP, enter whatever my local IP address was, which we saw earlier as 1.20. Of course, if you don't have a protocol combined as such, you can add one for TCP and add one for UDP. And if it's asking you for a range, i.e. this number to this number, you can enter both of them here as this. Once yours looks something similar to this, click add, save, or whatever you have. And after it's on the list, you should now have your server port forwarded and people outside of your local network should be able to connect to your server and play as expected. To demonstrate this, I'll be using my laptop over here to connect to the same server as me. It'll go through a VPN, so it's basically like someone outside of my local network connecting to my game server. So of course, this will be something like what your friends have. What they'll need is of course the zip file that we downloaded earlier, the client version. So I'll simply copy across the patcher that we downloaded over here. I'll put it into a folder such as on the desktop and extract all of the files into said folder. Then I'll open up imposter.exe and inside of here, we'll enter the IP address of our server. Here's where it gets a little bit confusing. If the person is sitting next to you and they're connected to the same local network as you, then type in the IP address that you put into your router. So in my case, 192.168.1.20. But if they're outside of your local network and connecting to you through the internet, all you have to do is open up a new browser, head across to Google and type in what is my IP. After you hit enter, you'll see a bunch of results and websites, and you should see your IP address listed somewhere there, usually represented by nine or fewer numbers, or you may have a huge long address with both letters and numbers. Don't worry, that's an IPv6 address. You can enter that here in the IP address box, and it should work as expected. So in my case, I'll go ahead and Google that and type in my external IP here, then click save. Now after doing that, you can close out of the Among Us client and simply open up the game and create myself a lobby. There we go. Let's go ahead and put this in windowed mode, then put it across to the side. As you can see, I joined the server and it's over here. Cool. Let's put that to the side over here and head back to my laptop, which represents a friend of yours who wants to join the server. All they have to do is launch up the game after configuring it as I showed you earlier. And of course, to get this to work properly, I'll be using a VPN just to prove that this works outside of your local network. By connecting to this, I'm removing this laptop from my local network and placing it somewhere else in the world they will be connecting to me through the internet. This will prove that port forwarding works and of course our firewall. The big up, I'm now located somewhere else in the world. So I'll fire up Among Us and simply join the lobby using the same code that we saw earlier when creating our server. Enter code and I'll type it in. In my case, it's H-P-O-T-G-D and join. And there we go. After clicking join, you can see in the console over here that we've joined the server. And if we have a look at the ping, you'll see it's 50 milliseconds, but I am connected through somewhere else in the world. Moving around, you can see it reflected in my local client over here, meaning that we've successfully set up a private server that we're playing on through the internet with a friend. To make this even more obvious, I'll connect through another country completely to give us a ton more ping. Let's move across to the US instead of being in South Africa, where I'm from. There we go. Now that we're connected to the US, let's go ahead and join again. So once again, HPOTGD. I typo that and join. Now, of course, you can see we connected again. This time I have 470 ping. Why? Because I'm going to the US, then back to South Africa. You can see I'm moving around still and looking at the console, Kevin is joining. Cool, everything's working as you'd hope. All you have to do to shut down the server is hit Control C or the exit button over here. After doing that, you can see we're disconnected from not only our US version of the game over here, but also our South African local version of the game over here. Also a good side note is that if you're going to be joining on other clients, you don't necessarily need this program over here. You can, of course, follow the instructions on this website, which will also be linked down in the description below. This website that they refer to is used both on the Android section down here, 
and possibly also on the iOS section, but you'll need a jailbroken device in order to use it. So really it's just for Windows and Android. When you're on this page, it tells you how to connect to a server. You just punch in the IP, click the button, download server file. I'll put in say 127001 as such and download. There we go. All that you have to do is written down here. You can do this to avoid downloading and using the program that connects you to the server. And of course, if you are on an Android, you'll see something different here. All you have to do is make sure that it's named the correct file, then copy this over here, start R, paste it in, navigate across to it, and replace this file here with the one we just downloaded. In order to get back to the official servers, all you have to do is change the region in the bottom right hand corner of your screen. And if you'd like to switch back to your server, all you have to do is redo the steps above or use the patcher program that we downloaded earlier. If I use inspect element to pretend that I'm on a mobile device, you'll see what it looks like on an Android. Connect to a server. To play on a private server, type the server IP and overwrite the regioninfo.dat file in internal storage android data com dot in a sloth dot space mafia files. Simply just type in the IP, download file, and it'll give you something similar to this. Place it inside of this folder and overwrite the existing one. I would say make a backup of the existing one as well, just so that you can switch back to it easier if changing your region doesn't reset you back to the default original servers. But anyways, that's about it for this video. Hopefully you found something useful in it. Money's been taken over here for Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao!